Hello and welcome to Reinfused. Today we are taking a look at this. Okay, it's upside down, so you probably can't read it quite as well. <laughs> this is the Sword M5, and it is an 8 bit ZAE based computer from 1982. Mine came in this rather nifty little carry case, which is uh, quite a heavy duty plastic. So let's open her up. A satisfying pop when you open these things. All right. So yeah, there you go. You see the computer. It's here. It's got a kind of a rubber chiclet style keys, much like the Sinclair Spectrum. Although the keys are smaller, they are also a lot firmer than the Spectrum's ones, so they are a bit easier to type on. I personally, in my personal opinion, anyway. It's uh, yeah, an external power brick, quite a hefty one as well. This is a Japanese one, so it's uh, running at 50 hertz and 100 volts, and therefore I need a, obviously a step down converter to use it. And it came with two cartridges, the basic I, and it is, I believe, I rather than one, and uh, this tape just marked as game, which uh, that actually has, well, it's got two games on there. It's got baseball and Zach Bannock, and also a TV configuration program as well, so you can get the colors right on the TV, mainly due because this did have RF output, but though it does also have composite output as well. Right, so... This was launched, as I said, in 1982 in Japan by the Sword Computer Corporation. But it was also sold over here by a company called, and by over here, I mean, of course, the UK, <laughs> by a company called the uh, by Computer Game Limited. Uh, and it was named the CGL M5 there rather than the Sword M5 for obvious reasons. And this version was also sold natively in Czechoslovakia. And it was pretty popular because it was basically one of the first affordable like properly released machines rather than just being an import like machines like the spectrum were imported there but all quite expensive because of that the this machine as well uh the same basic machine was rebranded by takara and sold as the game m5 in japan and south korea so it got around a bit this one uh, it was relatively popular not hugely so, obviously not in the UK. The problem with the UK was it came out around the time as the Spectrum and it retailed about 190, 195 pounds, which was significantly more expensive, well, more expensive even than the Amstrad as well at, at one point. So yeah, the price kind of let it down. And also the specs, because although it was, uh, it was running quite a high, relatively high clock speed, a 3.58, on the uh, ZAE, it only had 20 kilobytes of memory and up to 16 kilobytes of that could be used by the video memory, mainly because it had fairly good specs. So 16 colors and uh, 32 hardware sprites, which uh, for its time was a fairly capable uh, machine. Now, the, the big seller of this machine, if we just lift this little flap up here, is it came with a cartridge port, which was an unusual addition for certainly UK based machines at this point. Now the other thing about this machine is it has no operating system built in. So like the Sinclair Spectrum, the Amstrad, the Commodore 64, they all boot into the little their basic, which was effectively their operating system. This would just do nothing. It wasn't it doesn't even turn on uh, without a cartridge, which is something I found out uh, quite late when I thought this one was both broken, but nope, fortunately not broken. It uh just needed the cartridge in. So the uh, the basic cartridge is effectively its operating system. It's also the way you load tapes up. Now, if we just take a little look around the machine. So, yep, if we go to the back, turn that the right way up, and we can see a few. So, the yeah, there's a nice big din for the power. That's the cassette, which gives you um, obviously the normal saving and loading leads, but also the remote lead, so it can control a tape player. Doesn't work with mine, so I think possibly it's uh, using a reverse input for that and so it won't work there's a, a specialized printer port there two controllers i don't own any controllers for this but they have kind of like paddle style controllers and uh yep yeah, so the the effectively the composite uh sound and video cable so any mono sound obviously and an rf socket if you did want to use the worst method of connecting it to uh to a screen yeah the um i gotta say even with the H and L, which I guess is to set the channel for the RF. Yeah, so it's it's a nice little machine. Um, 
Again, underpowered and overpriced for the UK market, certainly. Which, uh, yep, yeah, the Sinclair Spectrum was just, although in some ways less powerful, obviously, eventually, all you could get was the 48K Spectrum, so it had more memory at that point. And even the 16K probably had more usable memory than this, solely because the video memory was uh, was the video did not need as much memory on the Spectrum as as this machine needed. Later on, they also released the M5 Pro and the M5 Junior. They were basically versions of this with the power supply built in. Uh, the Junior was effectively exactly the same as this, just with the inbuilt power supply. The Pro had uh, 36k of memory, although again, still with the caveat that the video memory required 16 of that, but still far more capable than than before. Now. Although this wasn't particularly powerful and and it didn't do so well over here, uh, in Japan it was quite heavily supported by companies like uh, Namco, Konami and Irem. Irem being the guys who made R-Type. So this did have uh, some moderately well-done games and, and a fair library as well, over, certainly in Japan, not so much anywhere else. Eventually the price was dropped to 149 but it was very much a, a bit of a too little too late decision uh, and it never recovered in uh, the market the um the specs again quite like a, a lot of the z80 machines of this of in japan of this era the specs are very similar to the base msx standard so obviously yeah, the z80 processor uh, and the uh texas uh, instruments 9918 video chip as well so you can you can see why the msx standard was made like it was with a lot of these machines sharing already quite a few of the components right well that's that about this machine uh the the keyboard is uh it's fully typed so unlike the spectrum you, you don't get although you can see this does have words you might be able to see <laughs> let's see if i can get closer on the on the keyboard All right that's a bit closer so yeah although there are keywords on the keys uh in general you just typed everything out which confused me because the instruction when you said press tape to get it to load from tape and i was searching for ages to try and find a tape label on there and there's not and what it actually says it, what, it, what it means is press t-a-p-e <laughs> to get the tape running yeah it's a fascinating machine it, it's not very powerful it's not massively unique but it's still quite nice i really i really like the design this is all kind of, this is all very nice. The keyboard's not too bad. The splash of orange there, which the CGL version doesn't really have. It's got like a, a line of orange, but that's it. But uh, yeah, it's a fascinating machine. Uh, <laughs> what we're looking at. Uh, I'll try to get something loaded up, although it hasn't worked well. Okay, so this is the what the basic prom looks like. So it's a standard basic. The same things will normally work. The picture's not particularly clean. That's uh, This machine has had nothing done to it. So at the very least, I would imagine the power supply probably needs some attention. But it will probably work well enough for now. Now, the issue we got here is, as I said, the remote port doesn't work. So we'll try it again. But I would imagine we're going to have to try to load stuff manually. So there's tape. Right, so I heard the relay click, but nothing happened this end. So we'll just remove the remote port and then we'll have to listen out basically. Okay, so something has loaded. Don't know what, I don't know if I heard the relay click then. Did the relay click? Oh, okay, yeah, so this is obviously the Yeah, the screen. <laughs> this is the problem. Yeah. Now we've probably gone past another program, so let's reset this. <laughs> All right, so let's do tape again. You hear the relay click. That's what we're listening for is that click. Okay, so that's VRAM. That's, there's no star next to it, so I think that means it's not actually a program, so it won't try and load it. Now what we can do, there's a reset button on the keyboard and if a program pops up that we don't want to load, if you hit the reset, it will ignore it. Right, here's baseball. So will it load baseball? 
screen has gone very black. <laughs> okay, so we're just going to try again because that did not seem to work. So we need to kind of be on ready for the reset button to skip if something we don't want loads. Right, so we don't want that, so we press skip, and now it shouldn't load that up. Okay, well, we'll load up Zach Bannock. Right, so is that a double click? I can't tell. This is not working well. Okay, so <laughs> it looks like Zach Bannock has loaded. I think this one requires a, a joystick though. Or if it doesn't, I don't know what the keys are. But as you can see, it's... um. Fairly um, impressive sprites for its time. Oh, hello. We'll try again. We'll just see if we can work out what the uh, the keys are supposed to be. I can fire, so that kind of suggests that. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, I think I've got the keys. <laughs> right. Oh, there we go. Right. So, yeah, pretty. Um... Oh, I thought that was a collectible. It wasn't. <laughs> So, you know, fairly fast and fluid, although every time something blows up it does stop, so I'm guessing uh, that's not by design. I think that's probably... So it can do the animation of the uh, explosion. Seeing as when you blow up the little rainbow cloud things, it doesn't blow up and it doesn't pause. But yeah, this is... I mean, it's nothing, <laughs> it's nothing huge. <laughs> But it's especially like the Zs as the uh or the Xs. <laughs> but yeah, that was uh a fairly interesting game. Again, the yeah, there is the screen display is not great. But um But it's a fairly interesting display of what this of what the machine can do. That's a lot of sprites on the screen at once. Right. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit like. If you really enjoyed the video, please hit subscribe. If you didn't enjoy the video or you have something else to say, then please leave it in the comments below. See you next time.